Hello and welcome to part 4 of the course where I'm putting the Dalarani water mixable oil paints through its paces. So, so far we've done an Alabrima painting with quite a lot of detail. We've done a grisaille and glazing in a more modern style. This time we're going to paint an impasto artwork with the oil paints to see how they stack up and how they hold up. So we have done the whole um, test to see if it slumps in the first class. So we took the traditional and the water mixable oil paints together and next to each other and we did exactly the same shape and we saw that the height remained the same. The well the water mixable oil paints did take a little bit longer to dry though but with impasto you know it's going to take ages to dry anyway so <laughs> I don't think it makes any kind of a difference. So the the, the test today is going to see how how, how does it flow off the knife? So needless to say, because we're painting in pasto, we're going to pack away our brushes today. We are going to be painting exclusively with a knife. Let me show you what I've got in mind. I found this awesome rooster on Pixabay and we are going to paint him today. So the secret when painting in pasto is to work really nice and loose. Don't try and get any kind of detail into your artwork. You break everything down into its basics and you paint those basics. So as an example, let's take the background. Can you see? You can see sticks and individual blades of grass and so on. We aren't going to paint any of that. What I want you to do is look through your eyelash eyelashes just sort of squint at the screen and you so that you're looking through your eyelashes then you'll see that all that detail disappears so you've got a, a darker green in the background and a lighter green in the foreground and that's all we're going to paint no sticks no blades of grass no nothing so let's do it let's go over to the palette and mix a few of those colors. So needless to say, we, we always end up needing white. So let's pop down some white in the corner. That. And because we're working in pasto, we uh, can't be too shy with the paint. When you're the minute you start painting with a knife, or even in pasto with a brush, it takes a lot of paint. So you can put down decent dollops of paint. So let's say take some sap green. Let's say take some lemon yellow. Alright, so I'm going to take all the sap green. Let's put just a little bit of lemon yellow into it to get some sun there. Have to light it up a little bit. Now what I'm mixing now is that top or the back colour. So to also just push that a little bit further back, I think we can just add a, a touch of sky colour into that. So for this case I think I'll use a, a little bit of a little bit of cerulean and a bit of white to give us a sky colour. So what I'm doing is just adding a little bit of atmospheric perspective. Great, can you see how close we are to that colour now? That looks great. We'll leave it at that. Alright. So if you've never painted with a knife before, don't panic. It's actually really easy and it's great fun. It's really, really great fun. clean the knife on my roll of kitchen towel because I want to show you how I'm going to pick up the paint. When you pick up the paint, just basically run the edge of the knife through the paint. So I'm holding it upright like that. Can you see? Not like this. I'm holding it upright. So it's 90 degrees against the, to, to the palette. I'll put it down and I'll drag it through the paint. So what happens is, can you see there? You pick up a roll of paint, and that's how we're going to be painting with the knife. So if I'm, 
if I want to cover this area over here, let's say for example the, the, the palette is my canvas. If I'm painting in that direction, I'm p I pick up the roll on that side so that I'm laying it down like that. If I'm painting in this direction, I pick up the roll here and I roll it that way so that the leading edge that you putting the paint down against has got that roll of paint on it. Because let's say, for example, let's pick that up over there. If I've got a roll of paint on that side of the knife, it's pointless me trying to paint that in that direction because there's no paint there. There's got to be paint on the other side. That makes sense. So I'm just flattening out that out, not to get lose the height, just to get it as long as the my, my knife blade, so that when I pick it up, I've got a roll of paint all the way along the length of the blade of the knife. Okay, so let me go over to the canvas and show you what I've done over there. So I have a 16 by 20 inch Dalarani canvas, and I've made a printout of the chicken just so that you can get a feel for how I'm positioning him on the, on the canvas. So I've get, left myself quite a bit of white space, a little bit more at the top, a little bit less at the bottom. I've given myself a little bit more looking room over there than over there. So that, the, as before, the chicken can walk into the painting. And all I've done is just drawn myself really roughly the outline of the body and then just a few little loose lines like that just to sh show me the direction of the feathers. I haven't tried to draw any detail in. Yeah, but the face, I've basically done that, done that, the beak, a dot for the eye. Just so I don't know where is everything. Because we're painting no detail today. So what I also want to do is I want to have just a little bit of a, a loose feel about the painting. So we're not even going to fill up all the canvas. We're going to pick up some paint and we're going to work just a little pieces like this. Can you see that? So we're still seeing some of the raw canvas shining uh, shining past or showing past the chicken. So here against the side of the chicken, I'm going to work, put my knife, the blade, right up against the edge. Like that. And work away from the chicken. So the idea here is that you're working around the edge of the chicken so that you don't lose its shape. In other words, at the moment we're painting negatively. So here, I've got my roll of paint over there. Now I'm going to move to the other side. So I go over to the palette and I get rid of that paint that's on the knife. And I re-pick up that paint, but now with a roll on the opposite side. Because I'm now working in the opposite direction. Okay, so in this area over here, there's a little kink like that where I need to get into. So do you agree with me over here? I'm not too sure where the paint, where the paint ends, right? But I'm 100% sure I know where the paint ends at the top of the knife. So in that area there, you need to work with the knife upside down. So there's two ways of doing it. You can either, like me, work with...
your left hand to get it upside down like that. Or you simply turn your canvas around. That's a much easier way of doing it. I think you'll agree with me. And a more accurate way of doing it. I'm using my other hand simply because I don't want to turn the canvas around because you would get seasick on the video. All right, so yeah, but these back feathers, we, we've just drawn ourselves a few lines. So I'm going to just go straight over most of those, those marks over there because we're not sure where they're going to end anyway. But then all I'll do is just come back in and I'll clean off the excess paint off the knife. And I'm just going to add those lines back in there for myself. Just so that I get a feel for where they are and I don't lose the, that positioning. Leave that lovely rough edge over there. Up there I think we'll maybe add just a, maybe a little bit of sky. Continue on that side. Yeah, I think that's great. So we'll leave that rough as it is there like that. Yeah, let's go and mix up some sky color. Seems we've got a little bit of a change of plan. So I'm going to take some cerulean and white. Now let's just clean the knife. Because we can't have green in the sky. A little bit of cerulean, a little bit of white. Just a little bit of that. blocks, really rough blocks like that. Let's add one or two maybe, just a few little lines in there, just to indicate that we've got the, the, the top of these bushes in over there, it's giving us a bit of sky. As we move further down, we've got more lighter grass. So I'm going to take this green over here and add more yellow to it. So this time we're going to have just a little bit of sap green. Lots more yellow. And no sky color. So the sky color was to give us distance. And as we come forward, our colors look a bit more intense. So let's say first take a little bit of that. Now, because it's got the, the extra yellow in it, it looks a lot more grassy. Okay, let's gradually add more and more yellow. You could even add yellow ochre if you wanted to. Here I've got the bird's legs. So let's get that effect in over there. Just 
to define where those legs are. That. And here in front, I'm going to add some white. Yeah, that should be good enough for now. So can you see how I've left that little bit of roughness of the canvas still shining through and we can see the the shape of the the rooster so that's great so with this finished with the background what you'd want to do is clean your entire palette if you still got lots of paint left transfer it to a extra palette or just a scrap piece of paper don't throw it away yet because you never know if you just need a little speck of that color somewhere. Maybe as you paint your chicken, you notice, oh dear, I've actually got a bit of a uh, canvas shining through and it doesn't look good. Then you can use this little bit of paint that you got left to touch up, fill up that little area. Right, so I'm just using some water, giving my palette a quick wash. Because we don't want these greens unnecessarily inside the the rooster. Okay, so when we paint this rooster, let's go here. As with anything, you see here what we've done is we've painted the, the background first, right? And now we're going to paint the rooster so that we get the overlapping right. But now exactly the same kind of thing happens when you painting the rooster itself each this different part of the rooster is in front of other parts for example can you see his um, chest or, or body area in front on the bottom right hand side is in front of the wing and the wing is being overlapped by the the hairs on the neck or the feathers on the neck <laughs> i should say and all of that is being overlapped to some degree by the tail feathers. So you've still got those different degrees of overlap happening in one individual object. So we're going to have to paint in exactly the same way. So we'll start off with... The, f the legs and the chest area and then we'll gradually work our way to the wing, neck and then tail feathers and then last we'll, we'll do the face. So let's take a look. That chest area is quite dark and so are the legs. So let's mix ourselves up a, a, a really nice dark color. So let's say we take some raw umber. Now because we're painting with a knife remember, don't be shy. Got a decent dollop of uh, raw umber there. And we're mixing up our, our neutral black. It's the same amount of French ultramarine, same as we did with the zebra. Now, I think you'll agree with me. If we look at those tail feathers, we can also be able to use this really lovely dark color like this. And I also want you to look really carefully at that photograph. And you'll notice that it's not just black like this. This old chicken, this body, all those feathers are sort of reddish, orangish kind of burnt sienna colors, eh? This mix we've got here seems to be sort of a, a bluish black, or possibly a dark brownish black. So we need to get that bit of a redness kind of effect in it. 
So the best way of doing that is I think let's take some burnt sienna. That seems to be the main color around that black. So I'm going to take some burnt sienna and I'm going to pop it into this mix. So I'm biasing my black towards this ready brown side. So it's not a black anymore. It's a really dark ready brown. And that way when we paint it, the color becomes harmonious with the colors around it. And it just works. Even though it's really dark and it looks, appears black, it's not a black that's going to look odd. It's going to be a black that looks 100% natural because that's literally the way it is. Okay, so we've got that. So let's take this. Scoop up your paint like that. You want to get your roll. Now picking up your roll on the correct side becomes really important. For example, here I need to work now in, away from the, the green. There I need to work that way away from the green. So here I need my roll needs to be there. On that side my roll needs to be there. So can you see that? Oh, it's flipped around. So it's really important that you get your roll on the right side. So let's see. All the way along here I'm actually seeing quite dark. It's dark all the way along there. Even here by the neck as well. It just seems to be nice and dark. Over there, what's happening is the area I need to paint is shorter than the knife. If I had to load this knife up with a whole long roll, it's going to end up painting over there as well. And we don't want that. So this is what you do. You clean your knife. So I've used my roll of kitchen towel to clean the knife. And you don't have to throw that paint away. You can scoop it back up and put it back down there. Clean the knife again. Fantastic. And now I've got a clean knife, so all I'm going to do is I'm going to just load up that bit of the knife. You see that? So now I've got a short little roll that I'm painting with. And can you see? That little roll is now just long enough for that over there, so that if this area here does now by accident touch there, it doesn't make a difference. because there's, there's no paint that could end up over there. Put that leg in over there. And let's see where else is it nice and dark. Yeah, it seems to be quite, quite dark here at the back as well. So let's get that in. Seems good. Well, the areas, there seems to be other colors. I think here we've got some darks again, but I think let's paint that. Otherwise, if we paint that now, we're not going to get our overlapping right. Let's maybe pop those feet in. So those feet are, uh, the legs are sort of gray. We don't actually see the feet, do we? Look at the photo carefully. You'll see we don't actually see the, the feet. So I'm just going to take a little bit of white and a little bit of this black mix of ours. And that should give us a grey. So let's pop that in. And uh, when I put that, pop that in. I'm picking up the paint on the tip like this. And I'm just using the tip of the knife to drag that in. So you agree with me that you can't see the feet. The feet are sort of hidden behind the grass. So let's paint the rest of the 
the bird, then I'll show you how we hide those feet behind the grass so that we don't have to paint them. Now, let's paint that over there. So that there seems to be a burnt sienna. So I'm going to use a, a neat burnt sienna. Let's pop him down. Pick up a roll of burnt sienna. Now you need to be bold. So this area seems to be reasonably plain. So I'm going to just add that. So I'm thinking areas of color. I'm not thinking details. I'm not thinking feathers. I'm thinking areas of color. I can also see some of that in this area over there too. So I'll pop that down. Can you see I've picked up some other colors and stuff by accident? So what? Look at your photo and you'll see there is actually a bit of sky colors and stuff reflecting in the feathers. So what? That's great. So there we go. Body finished. <laughs> that was difficult, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, let's do the let's do the neck. So the neck will obviously have a few more colors than that. So for the neck we seem to be seeing like orangey kind of colors. So let's see. So we need to sort of shade from burnt sienna through to an orangey yellowy kind of color. So let's maybe put down some cadmium red. The next color down on the color wheel which is cadmium orange. The next color on the color wheel yellow. Do you agree with me there? That's going to give us a bit of a shading. And it's also going to give us nice, lovely, broad colors. Let's take some red, nice big roll of red. And that seems to be sort of down that area over there. Clean the knife. Pick up your orange. Orangey colors seem to be running from there. Clean the knife. Pick up your yellow. Nice big roll of yellow. seem to be running around there. Now you see that these colors sort of need to blend into each other. So I'm going to clean the knife and I'm going to blend the yellow and the orange into each other just using a clean, a clean knife. Just by gradually rubbing over them like that. If you see one color is disappearing on you, then pick some more of it up. For example, there I can see some of the yellow is disappearing. So I'm picking up some more yellow. And I'm bringing it over that. Okay, let's do the same with the red. Pick up just a tiny touch of red. I think I can do with a bit more red over here. Just rub over the two there where they meet. Be bold. Don't worry about trying to get details. Please don't, don't do that. Okay, that's great there for now. Now let's get this area over there in. Over here with this wing, if the wing seems to be dark, light, and then dark again as you got that overlap, eh? 
So let's see, the dark seems to be burnt sienna. So I'm going to pick up some burnt sienna. And that wing seems to run along there. Sort of that kind of a shape over there. I can see we've still got some dark behind it, so I'm going to pick up some black. And let's just fill in that area over there. seems to be roughly the area where that wing is, eh? Okay, so let's take that burnt sienna. And let's add some white to it. To give us a lighter version. Okay, let's pick a roll on this up. Right. And let's put that down around there. Clean the knife again. And give yourself just a quick shading up and down there. Clean the knife. Quick shading over here. And let's take some more white into some of this previous mix. And that should give us a bit of a highlight color. So let's clean the knife. But now that's, it, as you can see on the photograph, it's not very broad, eh? So we'll just pick up this, just a little bit, a narrow roll on the knife. And we'll pop it down there. And that's it. So there we go. We've got our we've got our wing. Clean the knife again, because now we want to get an overlap over there. So I'm going to take this and just pull it down. Clean the knife. Go from here. Pull it down. From here. Pull it down. So each time I'm doing this, I'm just cleaning the knife in between. Keep your knife nice and flat. So I'm using just a little bit of extra red and stuff over here, just to really have a nice clean color lying on top. That's enough of that. From here, just come clean knife, grab down, just to get the direction right. Clean knife, down. There we go. Our direction is right over there. Okay, let's do the, the tail feathers. So you can see those tail feathers are nice and flowing. So I'm going to pick up a decent amount of black. Can you see that? But it's not a broad roll. It's just as broad as what I want that tail feather to be. But I've got tons of paint on the knife blade. So let's see, let's start here at the top and pop him in. 
I'm going to just pull him out in that shape like that. So I, I am using the the feathers on the photo as a as a guide. Here we have one or two small guys. So I'm just using the tip of the knife. indicate those one or two guys over there. All right, now needless to say, we need some lovely color. So let's see, I'm seeing burnt sienna, so I pick up a nice long roll of burnt sienna like that, and I'm seeing it in this area over here. So let's start there and roll it out. seeing lighter burnt sienna so I'm picking up some of that first color we put down over there picking some of that up so that was burnt sienna with a bit of white in it wasn't it nice big roll of that And let's put a lovely little feather down over there. Each time I put a feather down, I clean the knife. As I put this guy down over here, there's my roll. Can you see? Is on that side and I'm just using that edge of the knife so my knife isn't flat my knife is actually like that I'm obviously now exaggerating the angle but that's roughly the direction or the that's roughly the direction that my my knife is a few little guys over there now please don't try and put every feather in be bold and let's see, I'm seeing some more yellowy feathers at the top there. And they seem to be sort of orangey over there. So I've still got orange on the... on the palette. So let's pull ourselves in a lovely orange feather. I've still got yellow on the palette. Let's grab some yellow. And put ourselves in this lovely feather over there. Then I'm seeing some blue. So let's say take a bit of cerulean. Nice roll of cerulean there. Some of these feathers over here seem to be blue. So let's take that blue one over there. Okay, so I think you'll agree with me. We're starting to create a pattern there, right? Nice one, two, three, four soldiers in a row. So we'll have to be careful for that. Definitely have to break that effect. And the easy way of doing it is just by overlapping. But for now, I've got the blue. I'm going to just stick with it. I'm seeing another feather over there like that. And let's maybe take some white into that blue. So we create ourselves a, a lighter guy. 
And let's see, maybe we've got a lighter guy overlapping these two. Maybe like that. Clean the knife. And maybe I'm going to pick up some neat burnt sienna this time. Oh, you know what? How about some red? How about some red? Let's pick up a roll of red. And we put ourselves in a, a shorter red tail feather over there. Okay, and now we've just got those few guys pointing down. A smaller brown one over there. Maybe a short little brown guy over there. There seem to be one or two little brown guys coming down in that direction. And I think that's enough for the tail feathers. Okay, let's clean the knife. And then I think while we're down here, let's quickly do the, the grass that's overlapping. So I'm going to just take some of the darker green that I've got left, which was sap green. If you don't have any left, sap green, cadmium yellow, white, and a tiny touch of cerulean, eh? All you're looking for is just one of these greeny colors, as long as it's darker than what you've got there. So I'm going to pick up some of that. Now this is why I'm going to pick it up on the knife. So there's my color. I'm going to pick it up on the knife like this. So I'm rubbing my knife through that paint. So I've got a, quite a lot of paint on there, but it's a very thin layer of paint. Can you see there? There's no height on that paint. Well, let's go here. And all I'm going to do is just, just using the tip of the knife. Pick up some more using the same technique and just pull downwards like that. So what you're basically doing is you're forming grass. And it's great because it's picking up all these other colors and we're giving ourselves different colors going on over there. Let's maybe even use a bit of more sap green into that mix. Let's face it, your uh, your bird is casting a shadow. So this is at the same time giving us our, our shadow over there. Uh, dark green. And each of these little lines I'm, I'm adding in here are just really rough. In other words, some are a little bit longer, some a little bit shorter, and so on. And each one of them is hiding the feet. Get a little bit more green in there. Bit more sub green, so I'm gradually going a little bit neater and neater sub green at the moment. And don't be shy, it's quite, the paint is actually quite thick here at the moment. because I'm, I'm working lightly so as I go over the previous it's lying on top of the previous guys because I'm not using any pressure okay so can you see our sun is coming from the left to the right so I've extended that shadow a little bit more out towards the right he's broader over here and he goes narrower out that direction that's good enough. And now we've hidden our feet. And he's picked up some of these other colors. And it's become quite a bit of a, a mixture of colors over there. And that's keeping it interesting and giving it a nice little grassy look. Okay, so now let's go ahead and do the face. That's the beauty of painting with a knife. Things go really quickly. You can make artworks 
the speed of light. Okay, so we've got that beautiful red over there. So I'm going to pick up some cadmium red, but I'm not going to pick a, up a big roll because I don't need to make a long lines and things now. I don't need to fill large areas, so I'm just going to pick up just a, a small little roll like that. See? But I've got lots of paint on it. So what we're going to create is those that little effect with a spiky effect over there. So we're going to do that with each of those little spikes is going to be a roll of paint. So I'll start, I'm, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to start from the left and work my way to the right. Put it down and bring it down. Pick up a new roll, put it down and bring it down. New roll, down bring it down. That looks pretty cool, eh? <laughs> All right, let's see. Yeah, the front is not really such long, guys. I think there we can get away with just putting like that. There's also red right here by the eyes and stuff. So you know what? I think we can block that in there as well. And while we're busy with the red, we may as well finish that over there too. So I'm just using the tip of the knife to work that in. This here needs to walk up to the. So let's just move that up. Like that. Then we've got some white over there, so I'm going to clean my knife, pick up some white paint. Pop that bit of white in there. Can you see I haven't tried to get it 100% or anything like that? The beak as well. Just, can you see how little paint I've got on there? Just on the very tip. And out. On the very tip. Got a little bit of an eye over there. Like that. Over there it seems to be darker, so I'm going to take a little bit of the red and a little bit of the black, mix them together to mix a, just a tiny amount of black into the red. And that'll darken up that red. And we'll pop it in that area, just over there like that. Take some of that same color. We'll pop it in that area. Over there, like that. Here, my beak isn't quite right, so I'm going to steal just a little bit of the, the paint. This, this extra paint of the green over there. So I'm going to just take some of that green and just roll it over. knife very carefully steal a little bit of that to get that shape correct now I'm just taking a tiny touch of cadmium yellow just here above the eye just extending that over there 
just to make that little area there look around her. And with that, our painting is finished. So let me zoom in and let's take a look if the, the, the impasto effect has worked and what it looks like with the water mixable oil paints. In other words, let's take a look and if we've answered our question whether we're getting a good impasto effect with water mixable oil paints or not. I think we've got ourselves a lovely effect. Just look at the beautiful mixing that we've got of the paint and look at the beautiful height that we've got. I think we can see it even better if we look at the camera from the side. Right, just look at that great height and texture that we've got. So there we have it. I think you'll agree with me that whether we're painting a la prima in one sitting, whether we're painting in washes in multiple sittings, whether we're painting in pasto, outdoors, anywhere, the Dollarani water mixable oil paints is going to give us a beautiful effect. And the best part is we're all mixing with water, so there's no problems with cleaning up, and there's no fumes or anything like that, and my hands are clean. It's fantastic. I hope you uh, give the dollar around water mixable oil paints a try as well. You'll be really glad you did. I'll see you next time.